All right, so what's up everybody? Grim Green, back here today. Thank you so much for joining me. I wanted to talk about this sub-ohm tank today. This comes from Horizon Tech. This is the Falcon Resin Artisan edition of this particular sub-ohm tank. Now, this is the first Falcon that I've used. I never used the original Falcon tank and I never used the original Falcon resin tank. My only experience is with the newest Falcon Resin Artisan Edition tank. And right out of the gate, I wanna say it, it's a damn, damn good vape. I think where Horizon Tech really shines as a company is with their coil heads. They just make they just make fantastic coil heads. The tank itself isn't really anything to write home about. Where the real joy from this tank comes is again, those particular coil heads. But in order to get to know this whole tank just a little bit better, as well as the coil heads just a little bit better, what we're gonna do is go up close, as we always do. That's right, quick short up, be closey time. Go. All right, well, here we go. Falcon Resin Artisan Edition Sub Ohm Tank. Now, the tank itself, it, it's, it's real straightforward. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this tank because what's really interesting to me about this tank is the different coil heads that it comes with and how those coil heads have changed. So, like most sub ohm tanks, you have a base that you're going to plug your coil into. This has an adjustable AFC, which is really very firm. It is a firm, firm AFC. In fact, unless Unless the tank is together, I don't know at this point if I'm going to be able to even open this AFC. That's how firm it is, which means it'll stay wherever you want to put it. Of course, you have a bubble glass option as well as a straight glass option. Aesthetically speaking, I think the straight glass looks so much better than the bubble glass, but I do like the extra capacity that the bubble glass gives me. I wish there was a way in sub ohm tanks to get a little bit more capacity without having to have this like fishbowl bubble glass design. It's, it's really one of my least favorite things. This black and white sort of smoky swirly one is honestly the only tank that I I would want to use from this particular collection of tanks. All the other colors, I mean, they don't look great, man, at least in my opinion. I suppose this blue camo one, not too bad. This one, sure, it's not super offensive, but it's certainly not my favorite. Then we get into some that look like this that I just, I, I really don't like the way this looks uh, personally at all. I don't, I don't like it. And then, good Lord, this just looks like sickness. It just looks like someone got sick all over this tank. It's like weird tan colors and like weird sort of peach and, and green colors. It just looks like a nightmare. And all of these Falcon Resin Artisan Edition tanks come with two coil heads on the inside, and they'll tell you M2 mesh coil head, M triple mesh coil, which is my favorite coil. And not only that, there's a lot of other coil head options as well. F1, F2, F3, then you have the M1 and the M2 as well. Now, obviously, I don't have the F1, the F2, or the F3 coils, so I can't speak to how those particular coils vape, but I do want to look at the coil heads that I have in front of me. We're going to start with this M1 coil head. As you can see on the inside of this M1 coil head, it's just one large piece of mesh, and this uses the organic cotton and wood pulp as a wicking material on the inside. These wick fantastic and offer a little bit more open of a vape since you have a little bit more space through the middle for airflow. Then we have this M2 coil, which I have vaped on uh, a lot. I vaped one coil head's worth of, of vaping through it, I guess. Essentially the same thing on the inside. One big piece of mesh and then cotton and their wood pulp and cotton mixture for wicking. And really the only difference between the M2 and the M1s is the resistance. The M2 is going to be a little bit higher of a resistance. And all of these coil heads have that minimum line on it. Kind of like that uh, UL Valerian tank from not too long ago. You're supposed to not let the juice go below this line or you could run the risk of having, you know, uh, dry on the inside or getting dry hits. Me personally, I have let my juice go below the minimum line without any sort of uh, catastrophic effects happening. So when we get to the M triple coil, which is the one I'm going to be using today, there was two versions of the M triple coil. This was the first version of the M triple coil. Mesh coil, absorbent cotton, 0.2. Apparently this version, the one with just absorbent cotton, was the one that a lot of people ran into a lot of issues with, and so they kind of updated it to the mesh coil, wood pulp, and cotton for 
I'm not sure. Better wicking, longer coil head life, and it looks like they also lowered the ohms just a hair on it from a 0.2 to a 0.15. And as you can see, these coil heads are slightly different shaped and they're a little bit bigger overall. And this is the original one. This is one with just the super absorbent cotton, and this is the one with the cotton and wood pulp combination. And you can see one of the big differences right away is that the wood pulp and mesh, the newest version of the M2 coil, has like these uh, holes cut into it every so often, like every other juice flow hole has a hole actually in the cotton, and I'm assuming that is to aid in the wicking process, and they both have that minimum line. Don't let your juice go below the minimum line. And then on the inside, you can see that the coil head's different as well. This old mesh coil head is more of a traditional mesh, and then this newer one looks like it's using like a slightly different pattern. Looks more like a honeycomb in there, and I'm assuming they do that for wicking as well as to be able to keep that resistance up a little bit, even though this is a lower resistance than the original ones. The original ones that are apparently discontinued at this point. They're not making these anymore, although they're probably still for sale somewhere. So if you want to make sure that you're getting the newest version of the M2 triple coil head, make sure that it is the one with cotton and wood pulp and not just super absorbent cotton. Or not M2. What did I say? There, there's too many, right? There's too many. This isn't the M2 triple. This is just the M2 triple. Oh, good lord. M1, F1, F2, M3, the M4 triple, the M3 quad, the M4 87 M core quad. But we're just going to put that coil head right into the base. Just snug it down. There's no real reason to crank it down real hard in there. And then before I vape any sub ohm tank, I like to just put some juice. Put some juice in the top. Just a little bit of juice. Just a little bit of juice like that. And then you kind of just assemble the rest of your tank. That coil head screws onto the chimney. And now that the tank is together, we can open this AFC, which even with the tank all together, this AFC, it, it's pretty firm. The top to refill it is threaded and it's only a few threads. It's literally like a quarter of a turn to get this off. It's on right there and it's already off. And then you have two big kidney shaped juice fill holes right there. So let's just fill this the rest of the way. Enough talking. Let's get to vaping. Top goes back on. And lastly, this is a big gripe for me with this tank, is this damn drip tip. This damn drip tip is a big, wide, 810 looking drip tip, but unfortunately, it's just a tink, dinky, tiny little 510 connection right there. And that bothers me so much. I wish with all of my wishes, this was just an 810 so I could use any 810 drip tip I want on there instead of just having, instead of just being limited to this little 510 connection. And it makes the fit of the drip tip overall weaker because it's got a smaller surface to grab onto. So it kind of fits in there pretty nice, but every time I use it, every time I take it out of my pocket, inevitably the drip tip ends up coming out or ends up cockeyed or something like this. Because of that weak little connection in there, this drip tip just does not hold on there really well and it really bums me out. But it's full and I want to get back up to normal view and I want to vape this thing. Damn good, damn good vape. Like I said, the strongest part of this tank is in those coil heads. Horizon Tech actually has some actual real innovation in their coil heads. They use the triple mesh coil heads, as you saw in the up close. It's a combination of cotton and wood pulp, which I don't know exactly what that does. As far as I know, these are the only coil heads on the market right now that use a combination of cotton and wood pulp. And I don't know what sort of black magic fuckery is going on in there, but the things wick like champions and taste just fantastic. The M triple coil coil head that I have in here right now is truly and honestly one of the best tasting coil heads that I have used in a long, long time. Single mesh coil heads are fine. They work great. I find that I don't get quite as good a flavor from them, but these triple mesh coil heads just taste, they just taste delicious. And they perform like crazy. just like crazy. I do also really like that these coil heads are backwards compatible with all of the other Falcon tanks. So if you have like the original Falcon or the Falcon resin, you can use the newer updated, you know, mesh, triple, cotton and wood pulp coil heads 
in your tank so you don't necessarily have to buy like a completely brand new tank. So of course, I do have a few gripes with this tank. Aesthetically, I feel like I'm beating a dead horse here. I can't stand any way, any any of the way that any of these tanks look. Look, I, I like a good like swirly stabilized wood and acrylic mod, but I don't necessarily want my tank to be this crazy, swirly, ridiculously ugly color looking tank. It's really a shame in my opinion that Horizon Tech didn't put these really stellar, I mean stellar, stellar coil heads into a prettier looking tank. The tank is constructed well, don't get me wrong, it all fits together real nice and this little quarter of a turn on the top to refill it is slick. It is real slick and it's super easy to fill up. One last time, I just wish they weren't so ugly, dude. My other gripe with this tank is with that 510 drip tip. I think it's a waste to have had just a tiny little 510 drip tip on this particular tank. There have been so many, so many times where I have just picked this tank up off the desk, picked this tank up out of my pocket or out of a backpack or something like that, and this drip tip is just eight kinds of crooked, just crooked and falling out, and I constantly find myself grabbing this tank and like, uh, like recentering that drip tip and pressing it down ish in there, but I'm kind of almost willing to put up with that obnoxious drip tip just to get this good a vape from these coil heads because you guys it's a really good vape from these coil heads really dense really saturated really flavorful it's good. It's a really good vape that I just want to keep vaping on. So let's get down to brass tacks here. You're going to need your vape budget hands if you want to if you want to buy this Falcon it's so many words. It's so many words and I keep saying them out of order. Horizon Tech Falcon Resin Artisan Edition tank. Not really. Clicking around the internet, I found it anywhere from like 25 to 30 bucks, which is almost in that like it's cheap enough just to buy it just to try it out price now if we were going to play the aliens game or the fda game where they come and take everything i have and i have nothing left to vape is this tank something i would seek out and buy right away N no but yes but yes with a different tank. What I would probably do, I would probably go buy the original Falcon tank because I think it's a much better looking tank and I would use these brand new mesh triple with the mesh triple coil heads with the with the organic cotton and with the wood pulp. They are a fantastic, fantastic vape. I think the price of this tank is worth it alone just to get those really good coil heads. So yeah, that's what I got for today, everybody. It is what it is. Again, YouTube really dislikes links to external vape shops in the description, so you're going to have to use your Google Foo, but you should find these for around 25 to 30 bucks, depending on where you shop. That's what I got for today, everybody. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, yeah, dude, let's keep on vaping. That's enough.